Well, certainly excited to be here and looking forward to our opportunity to get back out on the court. And our young ladies are, are really excited about this opportunity. And certainly we have a great challenge ahead of us with Clemson. Clemson is you know, incredibly athletic. They're very, very good at turning their opponents over and getting out in transition. And great in a half court at, at finding ways to really maximize their athleticism. And so certainly you know, an opportunity for us to continue to grow and get better and, and face great competition. The, the people here at Mississippi State have been outstanding to us and, and it's been really fun so far and looking forward to uh, continuing that journey. Thank you, Coach. Uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone over to you. Please state your name and affiliation. Start over here. Uh, Brian Henson, the Argus Leader. Um, Don, do you see any similarities between Clemson and some of the teams that you guys faced during the non-conference season? That's a great question. What we see from Clemson is a team that really is one of the top 10 in the country in getting steals. And we've seen teams really pressure us in different ways and the way that, that Clemson goes about it is, is different than what we've seen to some extent, but it's also you know, their athleticism we've seen in a couple of the teams that we've played you know, with a couple of their players. I think what Clemson shows us is a different look for us is that you know, all five players on the court are those type of players for them. And, and then they come off the bench with some more really, really good athletes. So you know, that's a little bit different, a little bit unique from what we've seen so far this year. In terms of addressing their offense and then they like to play a little bit faster, do you want to slow the game down or are you comfortable getting into sort of that track meet sort of game? But again, a great question. I think for us, what's really going to be important is taking care of the basketball. And, and in order to do that, you know, we're going to have to be willing to take shots when we get good shots. And if that means that they're a little bit earlier, we've got to be willing you know, to, to be aggressive. At this point in time, it's, we've, we've gotten to where we are because we've been an aggressive team. And I think we've got to continue to do that, but at the same time, be smart. And so where is that balance? You know, and so that's going to be something that you know, we're going to have to continue to figure out through the course of the game. Um, with Hannah Shervin, how have you seen her develop as a player from when she first joined the program last year? Well, and Hannah's growth has been outstanding for us, and she's been someone who has been able to really been comfortable at the rim. She's someone who's growing to be a lot more comfortable, you know, facing the basket. She's someone defensively, I think, that just gets more and more comfortable as time goes on in terms of, you know, when teams put her in a ball screen situation, how she helps in those scenarios. You know, just a young lady that continues to grow and progress and I think has really given us a huge boost this year. Over here to the right. Brett Hudson, Matt Wyatt Media. You got off offensively impressive numbers. What about your offense this year is unique relative to the ones you've had in your tenure here? Well, I think for us what's unique about our offense is that that we're an equal opportunity type of a team in in when we get a good shot, and I think that's going to be really important against Clemson, is when you get a good shot, you've got to be willing to take that shot, whatever your position is, wherever you catch it on the court. So the versatility piece and the, the selflessness piece of this group has been something that's been really special. And Clemson, at one point, lost three straight games to SEC teams. But then as the season went on, I think they went on a five-game win streak in ACC play. As you kind of went back through their season to, to scout their, their sets, did you see the growth of this team through the season? Well, I think Coach Butler and her staff have done an amazing job with this group at, at Clemson. The players have done an outstanding job of really following and continuing to grow, as you mentioned. You know, I think what we, we've watched is some of their early games against teams that are mid-major type of teams. We've watched them in the SEC, I mean, the SC, ACC action. And when we've seen them really grow through that ACC action, what was impressive about what they've done is that they're a team that, again, is very versatile. You know, they, they have four kids that score in double figures as well. They're a team that has the ability to, to put different kids in situations to attack the rim. But where they're really, I think, difficult for teams to face up with is is that they they find ways to pressure you in a lot of different ways. And I think that's a lot been a lot of their growth is that they can pressure you in a full court, they can pressure you in a three quarter court, they can pressure you in a half court, they can do it in a man that switches, they can do it in a zone that kind of keeps it on the side. And so I think that's where they've continued to get better throughout the course of the year is how they've attacked teams defensively. For y'all to go to Missouri State and win and go on the road to some tough environments, do y'all do you feel like your group is prepared for this atmosphere? I think we're as prepared as we can be, certainly because of the non-conference schedule that we faced. And and yet I look at you know where Clemson has been and, and the, the conference that they've played in this year and, and what they've done. They've gone on the road and they've beaten you know some really good teams. They they beat Miami, they beat Florida State, and they're they're a team that really has played in those difficult situations and environments as well. And so we look forward to that battle. We look forward to two completely different styles of basketball and 
and see what our young ladies can do. Stick around. Uh, Danny Smith, uh, Strawfield Daily News. Coach, uh, Duffy looks like she's been pretty consistent for you all year. Just what has she brought to the table for your team? Well, Kira is a young lady who handles the ball for us. You know, she's really a, a prototype within our style of play where she can play a one through virtually a five for us. She can handle the ball. She can shoot it. She can post up. She can defend multiple positions. And so we, we rely on her to do an awful lot for us because she can really play any position on the offense end and defend any position on the defense end. That's not asking too much of a player, is it? Yeah, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. She's obviously good for you. Um, obviously, you traveled a long way to get here. What, uh, what, if any, impressions of Starville that you've had so far that stood out? Well, I just think the hospitality has been outstanding since we've been here. And everyone that we have met has been very welcoming, very accommodating, you know, and, and very genuinely, I think, really welcoming to our team and to our fans and to our media. We've, we've traveled with a big group. This is an exciting time for not only our women's basketball team and our program, but our athletic department and our entire university. And, and so it's that hospitality we've seen throughout with, with our entire travel party. Back. Coach Zach Borg with KDLT. Players have been dreaming about getting to the NCAA tournament for, in Allison's case, her entire career. How do you think they're going to handle it tomorrow when the bright lights are actually up and it's time to play. Do you, do you hope they kind of keep their emotions for the moment in check? Well, we've talked about, and we've been a team that really tries to focus on celebrating successes at the right time. And, and so this is a team that I think has been in some situations where we've had some success and then we need to move on. Or we've had a tough challenge and now we need to move on. And so right now we're kind of letting them enjoy the moment of being in the tournament. And then it's time to change our, shift our focus to really being in that game. And I, I think the challenge for us is going to be not necessarily the moment of the game. It's going to be figuring out the speed and the athleticism of Clemson and how to battle that. And, and that may take us you know, some time to figure out how, what that really looks like. We can try to simulate it all. We want to try to simulate it in our practices leading up to this time. But it's different when you see it in game action. So that's going to be our challenge early. Cami Raisler, KSFY News. Um, question about Duffy to elaborate on the injury that she dealt with at the Summit League Championship game. How is she doing? She's doing really well. I think our she's a young lady who is ex incredibly determined. You know, she's been doing everything she can from a rehab standpoint. Our athletic trainers and our, our doctors have been outstanding. So we anticipate her to be ready to go. And uh, just about Starkville, what are your thoughts on the campus here and the atmosphere around the community? Well, this is something that's pretty unique about our team, too, in that Whenever we go on the road and we have a shoot around at another opponent's gym, our team takes pictures on their home court every single time. We, it may be the fourth time that Allison Arms played at, at a university, and she, they still take a team picture at that school on their home court. And so our kids are, love that. They love seeing other campuses. They've actually asked us if we can drive around. We, they're, they're impressed with our bus driver because our bus driver can drive the fastest of any bus driver you've ever seen in your entire life backwards. Like, it's unbelievable. Our kids get excited about those kind of things. So when you see our, our kids celebrating some things, they're a little bit unique. They think they enjoy, you know, the, just the small moments and, and enjoy the precious present. I think they're taking it all in. So they were impressed when we drove by the, the baseball stadium. I think they're ooing and I think they wanted to get out and get a couple cuts in, but I told them we had to practice basketball. So it's kind of a fun – our kids are enjoying it. Back right. Uh, Jay Elson, the Co-Sports Network. Don, you talked a little bit about the schedule and, and – placing the, you know, putting it together in, in such a way that give you, would give you this opportunity um, if you were successful and executed the way you needed to. Now that you're here and, and you face this Clemson team, and, and I know you've touched on them a little bit already, but is there anyone that was along the way that you can liken them to specifically? Well, I think we've seen a little bit of their athleticism in, in certain players with Indiana. We've seen it with certain players from, you know, from Missouri when we faced them. And, and and yet their style is different. But at times, some of the ways that Oral Roberts has guarded us in certain possessions looks like it. Some of the ways that Western Illinois really makes you make decisions under pressure simulates it. But there's not really one team that we can look back and say, well, that team really looks a lot like Clemson. You know, but we can take bits and pieces. We can look at when we played against LMU, some of the actions that they ran, you know, maybe specifically defensively, or some of the things that Grambling State did. But again, a very I think we take bits and pieces and we show our players little things from those games. But again, it's now putting all of that together and, and working to make good decisions on both ends of the court while being sped up and playing at a faster rate. Back left. 
Coach, obviously you made the history with getting the at-large bid, and not only do you get the at-large bid, you're an eight seed, which compared to the last time this program was in the tournament was a 15, so the expectations are higher. I know it doesn't necessarily affect the players as much, but is there a little extra pressure to kind of represent the league and, and kind of prove that you know, this should, you know, going forward, this is something the league should continue to have, these kind of at-large opportunities for a league like the Summit? Well, I think our young ladies are focused on, on our three expectations within our program. One is to be our best and to give our best effort for whatever the reason is. But our goal is to be here to play to the best of our ability. Our second expectation is to be thankful. And we're thankful for this opportunity. We're thankful the NCAA Selection Committee is giving us this opportunity. We want to take advantage of it. And then our third expectation is to enjoy the precious present and to really be in the here and now and take this all in. So for whatever the reason is, those are that's really kind of our – how we operate on a day-to-day -day basis. So that doesn't change. Our preparation from a practice standpoint in terms of how competitive we need to be every day is something that hopefully has prepared us well to be in this moment and, and take advantage of playing to the best of our ability and see what happens at that point in time. Zach, right? John Thayer with the Coyote Sports Network. Coach, what's been the challenge of the quick turnaround? You find out Monday who your opponent is. You've got a travel day mix it in there. Uh, it's an opponent that you're very unfamiliar with as far as, you know, opponents that you've played and they they played so what has that challenge been like for your coaching staff and how have the players uh, really locked in on trying to learn as much as they can as quickly as possible well, that's a great question i think our young ladies certainly are are very attentive to detail and they do that in the classroom and we their grade point averages certainly show that and so they've been a team that since and we let them enjoy that moment we, and we enjoyed it because of what happened this year with the selection show, we got to enjoy it twice. So why not? We got celebrated two different times. So we, we had that moment on, on Monday, and we really enjoyed that moment with the players and then allowed them to move into the next, enjoy that until it was practice time on Tuesday. So after classes on Tuesday, get together and really start to understand who they are from a style standpoint and then start to understand personnel a little bit better. And then you're right, then yesterday is a travel day and, and this is a group that is, they, they, their goal is to do very, very well and to play to the best of their ability. So they've been trying to take it all in and study and learn as quickly as possible and understand that we're, we're in a situation where this is really fun because we don't really know our opponent. It's not the second or third time that we've played against them. It's our first opportunity. And so it's it's learning from other programs that have played against them. It's learning from our games that we've had in the past. But they are very locked in and dialed in and want to do very well. Any more questions? Uh, long stats here. Um, um, Coach, there's a lot of family members. I saw your, your son, your daughter. I'm sure there's going to be a – a couple Aarons, a couple Duffies, a lot of whom actually played for this team previously. What does it mean to have, you know, personally for you, your family members, but also for the players who are going to have their, their siblings and, and folks here? Well, it's a very special opportunity for, for the young ladies in our program, for the, the, our staff, our coaches in our program. You know, it's not a special opportunity for our fans and for, and for the stu other students that are here, for our pep band, for our, our cheer team who is here. This is a really exciting time for everyone to be a part of it and to share it with your family. There's nothing more precious than that. And so it's, again, a, a balance of we, when we're playing, when we're focused on basketball, whether it's in film, whether it's out on the court, we're locked in. We're in the precious present. We're in that moment at that time. And then outside of that, we enjoy the time that we have, whether it's by the pool, whether it's outside, whether it's enjoying our bus driver driving really fast backwards, whatever it is, our kids at that point in time are, are you know, encouraged to really take it all in and enjoy it. And it's, we're really fortunate that we have a lot of families that are able to make this trip with us or meet us here, and that's something that's going to be really unique and really special for us. To the left. Uh, Brian Hitch with the Argus Leader. Um, for all three of you, as you guys have started to look at cleansing games a little bit, what similarities have you seen some, from some – to some of the other teams that you face this season. We'll start off with Allison. Um, they like to play fast. They like to get to the rim. They're pretty big inside, so we'll have to do a good job defending them and taking away their penetration. Um, yeah. Kira? No, I mean, yeah, like Allison said, we, we've played some really athletic teams this year, a lot of teams that like to get to the paint. Um, so, I mean, obviously looking back on those scouts and you know what we did well in those games and what we can improve on. Hannah, do you have to change your game up at all with some of the sides that they do bring? Do you anticipate shifting some things around? I think that our non-conference schedule prepared us well for the games like today or tomorrow. Yeah. Um, for you, Hannah, how do you feel like your game's developed here over, over the course of the season, or how do you like sort of that first person off the bench role? 
Yeah, I think um, South Dakota was so appealing to me because it was a school that focused on player development, and I think even in my redshirt year, I developed a lot, and throughout this season, just playing has helped a lot too. What, what, what's it like having to sit back and watch a team sort of succeed? Is it frustrating to get anxious, or is it easy to just keep going through it, knowing that this would be what when you come back in? During my redshirt year? Yeah. Um, I think it was exciting to see that they were so successful, but it made it um, feel a little longer. You know, I wanted to be a part of it, and now I am. So. Kira and Allison, if you could talk about Hannah and what she brings to the team and how she's fit in with everybody. I mean, obviously on the court, you know, her size and athleticism and ability to finish in the paint and catch some you know, maybe crazy passes from us um, has been awesome. But she truly has been a game changer um, on both ends of the floor, you know, defensively changing shots in the lane and then offensively just bringing that size and um, and then off the court. We just love having her around. <laughs> Here to the right. Uh, Danny Smith, Starfield Daily News. Uh, Kira, just talk about your season. Coach says she puts a lot of responsibility on you to perform. Just talk about how that's uh, been developing over the season and uh, – how do you feel about things? Yeah, I mean, the, the beauty of our, our program and our um, this team is that any given day, anybody can step up. And I think, you know, that develops a certain amount of trust between teammates because you know that it's, it's not all on one person and we can kind of share the load. Um, and I think that's been battle tested this year. As you've seen, you know, some of the better teams that we've played and different players have stepped up every game. Um, and it just makes it an incredible team to be a part of. And also, I understand you've been a little bit injured. How do you feel today? And then moving forward, how do you think that'll translate? Yeah, um, I mean, the the rehab is going well, and I am I'm healing quickly. To the left, Don mentioned you guys have a pretty good bus driver. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to tell us about about him and what he's brought to the table? I think we, we've had, like, the same bus driver basically the whole year back, you know, in conference summit. And so we got to the bus for the trip, and we were like, oh, where's Mick? And we got a new bus driver, and he, I mean, he's pretty confident when he's backing up, so. <laughs> yeah, Mick kind of became, like, part of our, our little family driving. I mean, because he, he drove us almost to every game in conference yeah. season, and he, he would, you know, cheer us on and give us little pep talks before the game. So, yeah, we, we love Mick. Any more questions? Back. Uh, Zach Borg with the KDLT. This is a team that Don was saying you don't really have any comparison to that you've faced. How do you kind of handle it when you're, when you're taking on a team, especially after playing so many conference games where you've seen the same teams over and over again? How do you prepare anew for somebody you really can't compare it? Yeah, it is kind of a new thing. You start, like, as you prepare for people in conference, you kind of get to know them as people, and you kind of get to know their strengths and weaknesses. So getting to play against a new team, it's pretty fun. Uh, you have to relearn their whole system and um, watch a lot of film and prepare a lot in practice, and you have to focus to focus on new little details that you don't, you, you almost normally look over because you just get used to playing the same teams. Back right. John Thayer with the Coyote Sports Network. Allison, you're the lone senior on this team. What's this mean to you, the opportunity to play in the NCAA tournament, being a big part of this team? What's this been like for you and, and for your team as you get ready for this mm -hmm. opportunity? You know, I think for all of us, it's been a really great experience. Um, I know, like, for me, we've, bec uh, we've been really close to it, and um, as well as the juniors. Um, it's been a great ride. I think we've all worked really hard throughout the summer and throughout this year. We all stayed very motivated, and um, yeah, it's kind of a dream come true. And yes, we didn't quite get there the way we wanted, but to say we got here um, at an at-large bid, I mean, that's pretty cool. Kira, for you, um, obviously it's no secret you missed a lot of time in the Summit League Championship game. Uh, I know you've been driven to get back on the floor and be as healthy as possible. So how much drive is there or motivation for you just to get back out onto the floor and be able to play again? I mean, you know, like Allison said, this this was kind of has always been our goal. And, and this is the first time that any of us have, have gotten to do this. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's not much that's going to keep me from playing this game. Um, and I know, you know, they're – 
Kylie, our trainer, has done an awesome job with rehab and, and getting me back, um, you know, getting the swelling down, getting the bruising out. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that there would, there would be, have to be a lot to happen to keep any of us from playing. Questions for the student athletes? I guess <clears throat> I'd kind of like to hear from all three of you on this, but um, Jay Ellison, Midco Sports Network. Um, so I guess I'll start with Allison if you could work your way over. But um, so, you know, we spend a lot of time talking about Clemson and, and the things that they do and uh, the problems that they could pose. What, mm -hmm. But shift the focus to yourselves. What's, what's going to be really important for you to do well in this game? Uh, I think Clemson, they like to put a lot of pressure on with their defense and they like to speed you up. So I think for us, our focus is kind of just to um, stay poised, take care of the ball, check our passes, um, just kind of the basics, but just do them really well. Um, yeah, like like she said, sort of the, the things that we've been focused on all year and the things that have, have made us able to compete with some really good teams this year, um, you know, yeah, ball movement, taking care of the ball, poise under pressure, all that kind of stuff, um, just sort of sticking to who we've been all year. Yeah, I think if we just focus on playing our game and staying, you know, relaxed in our game, then we could be successful. Back left. I guess I'll ask this for Allison since you've been here the longest. Uh, I've heard the, the term the precious present used a lot. Uh, is this kind of the ultimate test of that? Because this is something you've all been working for for your entire careers. I mean, when the, when the lights get turned on, there's, it's going to be a different experience tomorrow. How do you... How do you kind of handle that and, and just kind of explain what that precious present is going to mean for this moment? You know, I think the precious present is anything you make it. I think sitting here in the media, which some people like and some people don't, is enjoying the precious present or being in the locker room, jamming out to music, um, walking onto the court for the first time. I mean, it's just how you interpret the precious present. So, yeah, tomorrow, you know, when they announce your name or when that horn blows, I mean, you just got to enjoy every second of it. Cammie Raisler, KSFY News, out of Sioux Falls. Allison, my question for you. Talk about Mississippi. What are your thoughts on being down here? What have you experienced so far, and what's it been like? Well, it's a lot warmer down here than back at home, so that's pretty cool. <laughs> Things are a little greener. But no, it's been really pretty. We got to walk around town a little bit last night, and that was just really cool to see the architecture and stuff like that. Um, no, it's been great. Questions for Allison and Kira. Uh, obviously saw a coach brought her children with her. Mm -hmm. uh, Allison, you've got your sister and Bridget actually played in the last NCAA tournament. Kira, Caitlin was here and she didn't have this opportunity. Uh, I guess the first half is, are, are, are they going to be here tomorrow? And, and what does it mean for you mm -hmm. two to be kind of playing for those who didn't necessarily get this opportunity, like, like obviously Caitlin, uh, to, to get this opportunity? Well, Bridget won't be here tomorrow. My youngest sister will and hopefully my mom are going to make the trip. Um, but yeah, I think I think it's really cool that we get to experience this because I know there's a lot of athletes that go through the program that don't get this chance. And lucky for me, I could say I did. I mean, I got close to not being able to experience it. So uh, in my heart, I'm very grateful. Um, yeah, actually, Caitlin is going to be here tomorrow. So that's cool. She'll get to experience this. Um, but I, I think, you know, we've kind of said this throughout the year. The success that we've had was, you know, because of a lot of the girls that came before us, including our older sisters. Um, and so, you know, it is about this team, but it's also just about this program. And we've had a lot of successful teams and a lot of girls that worked really hard. And so this isn't just for us. This is for, you know, USD women's basketball.